We are go for liftoff in T minus 30. Hit the record button. on the line as I always do uh, and I was I was reading some of your posts on Facebook um, Kenny and yeah. this one actually is really interesting I don't I hope you don't mind if I read it but it's, sure. it's really cool uh, you write <clears throat> there are some people I will always pray for sneak an umbrella under their pillow before they wake up when it's raining be the voice in the shadows that says keep going be the bump in the road that says slow down. Some people may never know how much I care about them as a friend, brother, whatever. That's just the way God made me. Made me. Your answer prayers are my answer prayers. Smile, y'all. Something out there loves somebody out there loves you. Rather than write a slam poem, I'll just get to the point. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have your yeah. hashtags there, but it's it's uh, yeah. That's why yeah. That's why I have you on right now because people like you are what we need in this world. We need more positive energy, more positive people that write positive poetry, and so that's why Kenny Copeland is my guest today. How are you doing, uh, Kenny? <laughs> I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. And also, thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, as you know, I'm a big fan of yours, and just um, you are poetry. As soon as we make a poster for poetry, we'll have your face on there because you are the community. You are the guy that um, I think kind of brought me into um, other areas of the L.A. poetry scene that I wasn't aware of. So thank you for that. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm excited to uh, share some work. Cool. Okay. Yeah, actually, um, like you said, actually, I I met you at, um, I think it was Mental Monday the first time I met you. Yeah. Which is uh, at House of Bruce in San Fernando, and then I invited you to come over to Tia Chuchas, but I said, mm-hmm. you have to be the feature. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, Put me God. on the spot, right there. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no, 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 you're not just, you're not just going to go. You're going to be the, <laughs> the star because, <laughs> well, people that will listen to your poetry today will understand why I'm saying this, but um, I just <laughs> let you, you, I just let you prove me right. Um, so I don't know if you want to start with your piece. Or, I don't know yeah, why you have prepared cool. today, but I know you do some, have something to prepare for me, so I'm all yours. Absolutely, years. absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, so um, we can probably talk about um, the meaning and the um, uh, inspiration after I do this first piece, but um, just to give you a little bit of uh, background, um, born and raised in Los Angeles, California, the city I love, and uh, one day will be mayor, I believe. Um, and so uh, just out of my experiences, I kind of wrote this piece. So um, That was a cool – and actually I have a piece that that's similar to yours right now. I just listened to – uh, when you said this is, I'm not a Holly, you know, LA is not about the Hollywood sign, and mm-hmm. for some reason that came to me too in a poem. Like Hollywood is just a zip code. Hollywood is just exactly, you know, it's just an image that that I've, I've, you know, I, I didn't grow up here like you did. I was born here, but I didn't grow up here. So to me, Hollywood was um, a dream, I guess, that the people web, you know. And so when I came, mm-hmm. I'm like, what? What? What kind? What? What's this? Like, this is not Hollywood. You mm, know? Um, absolutely. And it was really interesting because I always wanted to be an actor. I always wanted to, you know, walk into the Hollywood doors and you know and make it big and never and whatever, right? But now, mm-hmm. fast forward to now, I'm like, no, I did it the right way. I did it through mm-hmm. the back door, and that's 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 the amazing thing that now I discover what uh, what I'm about. Many people are in Hollywood, and many people are trying to make it in Hollywood. They they do it the wrong way, you know. They do it in mm-hmm. the wrong way. They're trying to impress people. They're trying to be people that they're or somebody that they're not, and their ego gets in the way. So, yeah. 
anyways, uh, that's what I have to say about Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, you know what? It's it's one of those things where it could be like poetry and art. You know, it can be beautiful or it can be destructive. Um, and I think especially for a lot of young people, um, you know, it's it's one of those things where you know it's all image or a lot of it's image and um uh, in in kind of a, a crafted creation and so if you don't know uh who you are or you don't know kind of what you're about or what you stand for um you might get uh the lines might blur between you know the reality and 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 the actual um who you are essentially and so you got to be careful and know the difference yes yes and I know you're very professional because I've seen you, you know, live, or, or uh, of course. And there are times that I've seen you, you don't want to go on the mic, and, and I respect that now, and I and I understand, you know, that that is, you're just there to listen. You know, some some of people that show up to the open mics, they show up to get inspired, um, or to give inspiration. So there are times that you don't, you just want to take, you know, you just there to receive it. Um, but a few times that I, I had you go because I'm like, oh my God, Kenny's here. You have to go, right? And I've seen you spit live. Um, I I thought I always think you're perfect, right? I always think, oh my God, he's just amazing. But you're like, no, can I do it again? I'm like, right. but that was perfect. That was already good. What are you talking? About? <laughs> Fine, <laughs> sure, Kenny. You know, uh, go go for it. And then um, you're. You, I think you're. I don't know. I'm 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 assuming right now, but are you a perfectionist? Do you consider yourself a perfectionist? You know, absolutely. Um for a couple of reasons. Um you know, my father um he plays in a in a band, um and they're a multi platinum selling band, um, called Rose Royce. They're really big in the seventies. And um one thing I kinda took from from just kind of growing up and watching them perform on, on stages and, you know, Mm-hmm. Um, in front of thousands and thousands of people is that uh, they still rehearse and they've been playing with each other for about, you know, 30 years, 30 plus years. And any time before a show, they, they still get together, they still run their sets and there's really no need. I mean, they've been doing the same kind of um, kind of act in terms of uh, their performances, but they want they want to be good and they want to be good for a couple of reasons. I mean, the audience deserves that. The audience deserves um, their best. And also, um, as a performer, just you want to give your best, whether it's one person or a million people, you know. So for me, um, I always, I always want to, you know, honor the gift. If that makes sense, um, and not, and not ever do anything that's, that's not, you know, your full heart. And obviously, you're never gonna be, um, or you're rarely gonna be, you know, perfect all the time, right? But, you know, as close as you can get to that, I think is gonna be you know, beneficial to you, the audience. Um, and also, too, I mean, that's that's how, kind of how you would advance and, and get to get to know and share your work with more people. I mean, like, the, the better you are, you know, the more opportunities you're going to get to to do what you do. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, there are times when, when I feel um, um, that I, I, I may not be um, where I want to be before I step on the mic. Um, mm-hmm. And it'll, it'll still probably be good, um, I'd imagine, hopefully, you know, but... But I want to be mm-hmm. as I want to be I want to be great, you know. I want to be as good as this gift will allow me to be. Um, um, any kind of uh, whatever your gift is, whether it's creativity, whether it's songwriting, whether it's singing, um, whatever it may be, I want to I want to be the best I can in that uh, for the people I'm performing for. So that's kind of mm-hmm. how I see it. Cool. Thanks for sharing that because. Um... I admire I admire different different artists and different performers, you know, and and mm-hmm. uh, you are one of those performers that I'm like, wow, you know. And sometimes, picture this, right? John Lennon, back when before he was even a Beatle, right? He was talking to mm-hmm. his mother, Julia, and he, you know, there was they were in the diner, and uh, anyways, um, uh, Elvis Presley comes on the TV. And they're watching, and she's dancing, the mother's dancing, and everything. And then after that, John Lennon says to his mom, "I want to be like Elvis, or I want to be Elvis. Why couldn't I? Mm. Why couldn't I be like Elvis?" <laughs> mm. And the mother turns to him and says, "Because you're on, you're John Lennon." Aha! Uh-huh, yeah. 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 And I was like, "Whoa! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Damn it! Yes!" <laughs> 
<laughs> if yeah. you only knew yeah. like, how great you were going to be. I know. He had no idea that. he was going to be, you know, that great. Amazing, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and yeah. again, though, but the, but here's the thing, though. What, what's great about that story is that, um, you know, he woke up, you know, wanting that. You know what I mean? And And that's the mm. thing, like, I believe mm. that, you know, anyone can be great, but you, you have to have the mindset of, of, you know, being excellent in whatever your skill set is or whatever your trade is and just being dedicated mm. to that. And, and um, you know, that's – yeah, I mean, like, that's that shows, you know, what can happen. And, and it's almost like um, you want to have a balance, but, but you want to also be not, not insatiable, but you want to be um, – you want to be committed to excellence, Ambitious. you know what I mean? Yeah, you mm. want to be. You want to be. Um, so, so yeah, I love that. I never heard that. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Well, sometimes I, I feel like I'm repeating things, like stories. I'm like, well, oh, I'll just say it. <laughs> like, whatever. It's on my mind. <laughs> right. so, no, hey, absolutely. Absolutely. I never heard yeah. it, so it's good. And I, yeah. and I actually, you know, I'm 42, but I um, – I think that I, you know, uh, well, the Beatles, in particular the Beatles, I, I'm very um, keen with the Beatles. And um, sometimes I say random facts about the Beatles and people have no idea what I'm just saying. I'm like, oh, right, you're not a Beatles fan. Okay, sorry. <laughs> like I would assume everybody, you know, loves the Beatles and loves John Lennon and all that, but they don't. If they you know, are not so a Beatles like, fan, they are a person you do not want to be your friend. That's how that goes. Oh. Um, no, I just find you. I'll disagree. <laughs> I'll disagree, but uh, anyway, I don't, I, I don't want to make it about Beatles and me. Anyway, it's, uh, no, I, I wanted to it. focus on your poetry today, <laughs> okay. and I can ramble about the Beatles forever. So that'll be another show. Okay. Um, but let me step away from this kid that's annoying me. Anyway, um, so you have another piece you want to you want to do? Yeah, yeah. So um, just to kind of preface this piece, um, it's. Um, you know, I've been described as a conscious poet, um, and, and the meaning of that is, um, you know, you're you say things that you feel um, are hopefully um, educating, hopefully um, like self-aware, um, uh, and so and so this piece, um, you know, it, it uses some specific language that I'm not necessarily a fan of, but it's it's purposeful. Um, it uses the N word, um, and it's something to just kind of help us um, think, essentially. And, and last thing I want to say mm. about it before I go into this is that is that I feel like uh, in society right now, you know, you know, there's almost like a celebration of ignorance to a certain extent, where mm. um, people don't like to learn, people don't want to be better. Uh, you know, people claim to be, um, you know, non-judgmental, um, and 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 that's not always the case. And we celebrate. Uh, what's actually bad for us. So um, keep that in mind. Um, it's a sarcastic satire piece, and uh, let's get into it. Okay. Before you start, just make sure you you're put your phone on your near your okay. you know your mouth. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> have you heard the good news? Y'all haven't heard the good news? Oh man, there's no more reason to be sad. We got pills for that. Yellow, orange, and green, how the color match your genes. Don't worry about sleep. We don't want you to dream. We want you to think as long as you can think like us. Say what you want as long as it's negative and laced with a cuss. Have you heard the good news? You can be wrong as long as you're politically correct. Self-respect, we replace that with the new definition of black, which means as long as you can rhyme. Get this. You can be a criminal and a role model at the same time. You can have the gift of poetry but still cuss like a sailor. Too lazy for words, dog, you can just use letters. So F these B's, I'm trying to give them that A. Preach togetherness until it gets in your way. Player, do you. Be a nigga, get riches. Get out the hood, but never get back. Get on TV, but never be black. Do what you said when you were like, I'd never do that. Ladies, it's okay. Lower your self-esteem. So it's okay as long as your money is stacked. Just make sure you keep it real. But not that real you're thinking of. I'm talking about that real good hair extension. Because let's be honest, you're not pretty unless you pay for it. Guys, you ain't a man unless you're hitting it. Have you heard the good news? Now it's cool to talk like a runaway slave. Oh, we got that credit now to pay for our insecurities. Shoot, it wasn't hard. Living like the man ever since we got the master's card. Call that the master card. And a black card has no spending limit. But the weird part is you got to spend to get it. So uh, keep spending, brother. You just might earn the right for us to finance your poverty. And if anybody ever challenges you, you, 
challenges you, say, don't judge me. Then judge them for judging you. How dare this world think it might no more than you. You're you. You. Man. The woman. The quote-unquote head nigger. You don't need them. But you do need us. To keep buying our shoes. Keep buying our hair. Keep buying our gloss to express Mm. your identity. Because it's yours, not ours. And don't you know that if you don't wear labels, people won't know who you are? Have you heard the good news? That the good news of the Bible has been replaced by the better news of man. As long as it feels good, it's all good. If it doesn't affect you, don't worry. Even though everything we do affects us all in a world we share, but who cares? Rock jewels and ringtones. Give me a doggy bag, I'm going to take this home. Always feel free to take it down or dumb it down. Become a master at fronting. Spend three days writing a poem on social change for the rest of the year. Do nothing. Have you heard the good news? Wow. Have you heard the good news? Have you become the good news? I wonder. Wow. It is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love I love it. I love it. Um I love it because um well from the start you actually are saying we don't want you to think. Yeah. So from that point on I I fully understand who you are. And so um great piece. <laughs> great piece. Oh, thanks so much. <laughs> I, you know, it reminds me of another piece by Jason. Uh, you, you, you heard my my previous um, broadcast, yeah. Um, where he's 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 basically um, black, but he puts himself in a white man's shoes. Mm. And so the whole poetry is about him being able to get away with a lot that black people mm. can get away with. And right. um, the N word, as you're saying, the N word. Um, it has to be used. Yeah, you have to be really careful when you use that word because uh, I've seen artists, I've seen comedians, I've seen comedians in particular uh, using that word sparingly, um, or rappers, mm-hmm. or name it. <clears throat> and sometimes there's no reason to. Sometimes there's, doesn't mm-hmm. it takes away from your poetry or it takes away from your art. Um, mm-hmm. You 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 use it very well. Um, so does Jason and, and many other poets that I, I, I look up to because um, it's it's hurtful. It's a hurtful word and it's a hateful word. However, if you use it properly and you, you want to deliver a message, yeah, go for it. Um, I actually stay away from, from using profanity now. I used to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I realize it's like, you know what, take away all the profanity from your piece and see what happens. Mm. And so I do it, mm. and I'm like, wow, <laughs> it sounds so much better. Right, so it, detra- right. It, it distracts people, like like the, the curse words and the N-word and whatever, uh, right. you know, whatever word you want to use, um, takes away from the focus of your piece. Not your piece right now, right. but anyway, so uh, any other person. Right. Any, uh, I think there was an interview with Maya Angelou, he was she was talking to um who's that comedian? Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and you you know you know Dave Chappelle. Uh Absolutely. You know, they yeah. used to he used to he used a lot of the N word and profanity and you name it. Right. Uh and Maya Angelou let him have it because it was her show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, Well, wow, she's gonna let him have it. But you know what? <laughs> Dave Chappelle was open. To the criticism that she gave him, mm-hmm. and he was wonderful. You could see, you could see how he was like, "Yep, you're right. Yep, you're." Well, mm-hmm. He was trying to make excuses to it. It's like, "Stop it, stop it." Right. And like midway through, yeah. mid, yeah. mid the sentence, he was like, "Stop, Dave. Stop, Dave. Stop say, stop saying what you're gonna say right now, and just listen to her." You know, sometimes you have to just mm. shut the fuck up and listen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. How, yeah. how do you how no, do you get inspired with this great. with piece? How do you get inspired with this uh, you know with this piece in particular? What prompted um, that? You know. Right, right. Well, also just to kind of backtrack for a second. Um, um, you you mentioned that you you don't write with uh, uh, cuss words anymore, and um, you know I you know no judgment to any 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 other poets or whatnot that that do. Um, but I think I think as a poet, I think that. You know, the more efficient you can be with language, um, you know, the more the more your your poem, um, I'd say, benefits. And you know, you're a testament to that. You said that your poems were even more more strong. So, um, you know, I think I think it's one of those things where you know you really want to 
use all the tools in your toolbox to write a piece that is effective. And and to be quite honest, like, you know, I think there are times, um, you know, when using the N-word as I just did or using a cuss word might have, you know, a good effect essentially. Um, but I've seen it, I've seen it both done, you know, well and not well. I've seen it where it's like, why is this in there? It's not, it's not adding to the piece. And I've seen it where it's like, wow, okay, I really see what he's saying. Um, so there's that, but, uh, you know, to answer your question, um, the motivation for this piece, um, you know, I would say it was just uh, growing up and uh, watching a lot of cable news, uh, which I do. It's kind of a bad uh, guilty pleasure. Uh, Fox mm. News, MSNBC, CNN, mm. pretty much all the major uh, cable mm. news uh, outlets. And mm. I personally feel like there's so much, not just negativity, but there's so much garbage and uh marketing that's being done to our subconscious um you know a lot of the information you know lies in the subtext and it literally influences our decisions and we're not even aware of it and um you know there's a word that that's called um it's uh, maladaptive meaning that um we take on things or or you you do things that are not not good for you and so it's it's almost that like we we think about things which um influences our behavior and now we're living in a way that we think is helping us but it's actually um, just just furthering our destruction, you know what I mean? And, mm. you know, it's just a matter of just first being aware of it. I believe you have to be aware of whatever the problem is first, and then you can better address it because it's hard to fight ghosts. It's hard to fight things that you're not, you can't see or that aren't material in front of you. So first you have to see what the problem is or, or just be aware of your of, of your, your situation, and then you can mm. better address that and improve your life, right? So, so that's kind of what the motivation was for that piece. And... Uh, just highlighting just the, the stupid things that we all do, uh, me included, to kind of shed light on it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, actually, I had the same issue with, with newscasts in particular. Well, I don't like newscasts, to be, to be honest. So I just right. uh, hear a headline or two, or I, I hear from my grandmother, or I hear from people or on Facebook. Um, and, yeah, I mean, you have to... Like you say, it's, it's all negativity, and it's all they're all focused on the negative side of society, right. and so it, it, kind of, it comes to a point where I'm fed up. Uh, don't don't mind her, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, you you actually kind of get fed up, and I I, I fed, I'm right. I'm fed up with the news in particular. Um, not even here, but in Europe, I was uh, I was recently in Paris and Berlin, and even though I didn't I understand that. the language, yeah. mm-hmm. I did not understand the language, but I'm like. Mm-hmm. Ah, yeah, I can just feel it. Like you're being so <laughs> <laughs> It's like, wow. Well, you're yeah, here I mean, friends, yeah. and you know, anywhere you are, it's, there's negativity yep. everywhere. Yep. They yeah, were and that's, and that's on, really possible. Um, yeah. Good. Yeah, it is. Well, Sorry, I mean, ahead. again, I feel like I feel like that highlights, you know, uh, the point, which is that you don't need words. Um, in in your native language to to be negative, you know, negative it speaks to the subconscious. It's it's the subtext of what's happening. And so, you know, the fact that you would be able to you know experience that in a different country, in a different place, um, mm. you know, positivity, and negativity, it's it's um, there are no borders to it, right? There's no there's no dialect, there's no language to it. You can you can communicate and have a great time with people and not and not say a word to them. You know what I mean? Or you can mm. do the opposite. Mm. So it's one of those things yeah. where. You know, you just really have to be aware of what's around you and, and be conscious and, and purposeful and, and, and making the world better, I feel like. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and just like that, you know, I mean, I was stuck in a, in a hotel and I didn't want to get out of the room, to be honest. That's what it was. Right. And so I right. was already in, in that state of mind, if you know what I'm saying. Sure. Like, I was a sponge, you know. But just like that, I, I mean, there were there were times that I was in Versailles and there, was, there were times that I was in uh, Berlin in the middle of the whole... Um. <laughs> anyways, um, Potsdam was was a wonderful place. I was there, uh, even though I don't like Berlin that much, to be honest. <laughs> now right, that I look right. back, I'm like, they, they were actually good times. There were the, the Museum Island, and I was uh, I was watching the Germans dance salsa, which I was like, what? I'm in Germany watching people dance salsa. That's just amazing to me. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, yeah, not, yeah. I'm not in Latin America, anywhere near, you know, Colombia or Peru or, and I'm I'm watching people dance salsa. 
that has to be the most amazing thing that happened that day, you know? Um, Absolutely. Instead of, instead of being stuck in a room watching TV and watching negativity, I decided to just mm-hmm. know this is not going to be that day. This is not going to be me. I'm not going to be right. thinking negative, and I'm just going to get out right. there and meet people and, and dance and whatever, you know? We can yeah. look at we can look at life different ways, and many people have decided to look at uh, things the wrong way, and, and that's mm-hmm. their journey. So, right. good luck. But uh, I'm done. Right. Sorry, I'm done. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, oh, you're saying you're done. Oh, you meant you're done with the, the negativity. Hopefully, hopefully that. I am. Well, I am but... done. I am done, and I'm done. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and and again, again, like just uh, not to beat a dead horse, but like. You know, people have the power, you know, to ne- to to negatively or positively influence their lives, but they have to make the decision that today is going to be a positive day. You know what I mean? And and once you do that, you can't affect everything, but you can affect the way you look at things. You know, and um, mm-hmm. there's a lot of beauty in the world. There's a lot of great things that are happening, and so it's just a matter of kind of tapping into that, and um, and just kind of being you know a part of the. Uh, the solution, not the problem, you know, and so that's what mm. hopefully, you know, more people are, pe- nah, more and more people are trying to do and uh, be a part of, so it's up to you and me, let's do it, right? Let's so, do let's it. The like somebody, a wise man said once, there are, no, there are no problems, only solutions. Right, right. John Lennon said that. <laughs> John Lennon, <laughs> taking it back, huh? <laughs> yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Nice. So anyway, before before I continue, because I I usually forget to do this part, and I I think it's important that um, I promote the artist uh, that is that grace grace my studio today. And Kenny, uh, I want to actually ask you about your upcoming events. If you have any books, uh, open mics, you want to promote anything like yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Um, so there's a couple different things. Uh, the first one is if you uh, like what you're hearing, you can always follow me on Instagram at LA Poet Guide. Um, I'm on Facebook at um, facebook.com slash Kenny Copeland Jr. And uh, I'm going to be having some YouTube videos out, but if you jump on those two platforms, you'll be able to see those uh, when they come out. And then um, there's one thing that I'm working on. It's uh, it's uh, it's a pet project. It's going to be fantastic, I feel. Um but it's actually going to be a short film that I'm working on with a couple of people, and it's uh, centered around the world of slam poetry. And it's taken from my experiences when I was on the CSUN slam poetry team. Um, we're actually regional slam poetry champions, which was mm-hmm. great. Um, but the story about that is um, before we were regional slam champions, the, the year previous, we came in dead last, and we were terrible. <laughs> And then uh, we all got together and we saw what the game looked like and we, we just worked hard all year, got back to the spot we were at, and we, we came in first. So um, it's a loose translation of that. It's called Slam Poetry. It's a working title. It'll probably be uh, coming out in the fall of uh, this mm. year um, mm. to various film festivals, and then we'll kind of see where it goes from that. But uh, look out for that mm. as well. And, uh, yeah, look out for that. Okay, and of course, uh, whatever you want to promote, let me know because uh, I you think you're part of the Los Angeles Poets Society, um, and if you're not, yeah. you should be. You should be ashamed. Of it. <laughs> <You are>. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, and I know that you're you're in season uh, that you just mentioned right now. You're part of the Slam Poetry uh, contest there, and you, there's actually an open mic there uh, called Expressions, right? Right, so I graduated from CSUN, um, but I was on the SLAM team while I was over there. But they still have uh, Expressions, which is uh, their open mic, which is for um, singers, um, artists, poetry. Um, The only thing they don't have is comedy. Um, Comedians have their own separate open mic, which is also fantastic. Mm -hmm. So if you're in uh, the Cal State North area, everyone's welcome, everyone's invited. So definitely check that out. Okay. And uh, and a shout-out to Wesley, because I I know he might be listening. So Wesley's... uh another another uh, performer that I I look up to. Hopefully he calls next Absolutely. time. <laughs> uh I have a question. So who do you who do you, when you when you're performing or when you're thinking of performing, um who do you look up to? Like who's your poet to go to performer? Uh who do you admire you know, in general? Absolutely. Uh well first number one would definitely be my father. Um 
I'm named after him. He's Kenny Copeland Sr. I'm Kenny Copeland Jr. Um, I've seen my father, again, perform in front of crowds of 10,000, um, you know, do his thing on TV. Um, he actually sung a song called I Want to Get Next to You. If you know that, it was big in the 70s. Um, mm. And uh, I'm in love. Um, yeah, look it up. That's that's my father. It's um, He's that uh, he's that guy. So, when I when I get nervous, when I um when I think about how I can be better, I I kind of um try and kind of carry the energy from him into my performances mm. and um kind of kind of write off that. Um, so that's definitely probably one of my biggest influences. Um, and then beyond that, for poets, um, maybe a guy by the name of Black Ice, who I got the pleasure of meeting at a place called the Poetry Lounge. Got a picture with him. He was um. Mm. He was one of the guys that really influenced uh, my slam style. He was talking about some really great things, um, issues, problems within the black community at a, at a, at a really um, important time, um, which is <laughs> important time like like you know like four years ago. Like now. I make it sound like he was in like in like a, like a Black Panther or something, but no, it was, he was yeah like now uh. I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but he he said some really some really cool things that were not you know. And again, I don't know. I don't know his full body of work, you know. But I mean, the the piece that I did here, I took things and I and I, I said, wow, that that is encouraging to me. So, um, mm. so yeah. So I mean, that's definitely another one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. And actually, there's there's a lot of, uh, you know, in, in my experience too, uh, by going to different open mics and expanding my horizons because I used to just be a uh, one. Uh, one ho- what is it called? One pony, one trick pony person. Right. Where I would just go to one open mic, and Tia Chuches was that place, and it's still amazing. But uh, at one point, I had to um, branch out of there, and it was it was freaking scary. It was really scary. Uh, I didn't know what I was going in, getting into. There were a few times right. I was throwing the towel. You know, I was like, no, that's right. it. I'm not going to do this anymore. Why am I still trying right. to impress people? Why am I trying to, you know, fit into other crowds, sure. right? Sure. Um, but um, it's been a year, mm. and it's been the most amazing year. I love the that. most amazing year because I've I've met so many great performers, people that have, have shifted my um, – Half shifted, half shifted the way I think, you know. Like Sean Hill is one of them, uh, mm-hmm. Jason Brain, Jessica Wilson, yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Michael Ray. I, I can name a lot of people, um, but I mean, uh, in short, I just um, not only get not, not only do I get inspired, but mm-hmm. I, I realize that now a year later, uh, like I was telling another performer, another poet, Ideas was the mm-hmm. same. I mm-hmm. I told him I'm like. Every time I listen to someone, you know, uh, speak truth and, and everything, I, right. I believe that we are remembering things that we used to know, that we know mm. this is instinctively from, you know, past lives or whatever, um, mm. or we've been we've been to in that situation before, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, it's just remembering things. It's like, wow, now I remember that, or whatever. Um, and you grow from it, you know, you grow from experiences like that. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. And, and, and again, you gotta, you gotta give yourself more credit. Cause I know a lot of people definitely look up to you. Like I said, you are, you are poetry and, um, in the LA community. Um, and I, if I can share you with you a quick story, I was asking some people about some other open mics, um, just kind of in the area or whatnot. And they told me I should talk to you. Um, <laughs> and they just said, choose a day. <laughs> And he will tell you where to go. And I was like, man, this must be an impressive guy. And you know what? They were right because I did talk to you. And you introduced me to a lot of other spots. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, and I'm glad to connect you with Tia Chuchas and to other open mics that we you, – you've been to um, Mouse Espresso. Actually, by the way, Rider Wednesdays, uh, has, they, they, they have a new spot now. It's called Sugar and Cream. Um, okay. I don't know for how long we're gonna have that place. If you if you know what I'm saying, okay. like uh, right, yeah. right. So, but 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 our Wednesday is back with Jessica Wilson, and she's of course president of the LA Poet Society that I'm part of. And so you're welcome to go there. It's uh, every Wednesday at six, I believe it starts. Um, and you know, it's just uh, picking up again where where it left off with Bob's Espresso. So, absolutely, I love that. Definitely, we'll stop by. 
All right. And then so we actually have uh, enough time. Give me one second. Let me see. You know, yeah, we got enough time for one more poem. You know what? I'm going to do uh, – it's, it's perfect. It's a, it's a shorter piece. It's um, – I think something you might have heard before. Um, I think it's hilarious. Uh, okay. It's an open letter. Um, how do I put it? It's an open letter to a guy who used to ho- <coughs> host American Idol uh, with Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> I remember and, this piece. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because, look, American Idol was one of the biggest shows on television just ruling TV for years. And I remember the very first season, there was a guy that hosted with, with, with Ryan Seacrest, and he just disappeared. Yeah. I don't know what happened to him. I hope he's okay. <laughs> um, but, you know, he's just gone. And I felt bad for that guy because it's like, <laughs> wait a minute. You were a part of you. That's like you landing on the moon, and you're still around, and no one remembers. You can't go anywhere. So right. who's thinking of this guy? So, so I, wrote, I wrote this guy an open letter poem, and uh, this is how it goes. American Idol other guy. <laughs> I'm confident you did exist. Before Jennifer Lopez's beautiful hips ever graced the stage, before Simon Cowell's rude ways, before Randy Jackson was officially black, before any of that, you were there, I think. Next to Ryan Seacrest interviewing <laughs> Kelly Clarkston, I'm pretty sure you were there, but like the rest of the world, I'm not positive. What do you do now? <laughs> Do you watch old tapes in a basement with a microphone pretending you are still on TV? Do you go to comedy clubs? Do you go to comedy clubs as a package deal with Justin Guarini? Do you get advice from Terry oh, Hilton on how to appear relevant when in actuality no one cares anymore? Have you gone crazy? Sitting outside Fox Studios telling Al Bundy stories of how you used to be that guy who was that guy that stood next to Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> Do you hang out with other lost performers America has also forgotten? Are you getting coffee with Jaleel White, Urkel? Do you shoot the breeze with Macaulay Culkin, talking about Home Alone, hearing him joke how he literally is doing nothing all alone, to which you sit awkwardly because you know he's not joking? Are you having lunch with anyone from the Jersey Shore? I don't know. But speaking of Jersey Shore, to the one they call Snooky, don't worry, I'm working on your poem next. Sincerely, <laughs> yours truly, Mr. Kenny Copeland. Thanks so much, yeah. man. <laughs> Thank you, Kenny. <laughs> Thanks for making me laugh, man. I, I needed that right now. <laughs> absolutely, man, absolutely. And, uh, well, anything else you want to promote before we, we say our goodbyes? Um, I just want to say um, I really appreciate this show and everyone that's a big fan of poetry and community. And I just want to say um, – for anyone that may hear this, um, whatever your gift is, whatever your creativity is, pursue it with passion. Be the best you can at it because you never know who you're inspiring and um, who is actually benefiting from uh, your work. So just take that and uh, live happy lives. All right. Okay. Well, you guys were listening to Kenny Copeland. You know how to contact him, and I will make sure that this uh, link is is going live hopefully today or tomorrow. And I want to see you pretty soon at Tia Chuches, man. You have, you you haven't been there for a while, so we miss you already. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I'll be there. Okay, Kenny. So have a great day and uh, say hi to your dad and peace. All right. Thanks so much. Take care. We are going okay, for lift off in T minus thirty. Hit the record button. <laughs>
didn't see that coming. 